Thank you, Noam. It's great to be here with you all tonight. And uh, we have a special night of feeding your demons. And you will be guided through an adventure. This is like a Dungeons and Dragons from the seat of your own home. <laughs> and uh, don't be afraid. You know, it's, it's a very uh, deep and nourishing and healing journey. And I want to know how many people are brand new to this practice tonight. If I could see you, I can't see everybody, but if you are visible or could be visible for a moment, I'd love to know if you are new. You raise your hand. Brian, okay, I see you. Okay, I see you. <laughs> a couple people. Good. Welcome. And uh, other people maybe have experienced it with me or other places. I see see Eli, he's a veteran. <laughs> a lot of you are veterans, Karen and Noam. And I used to teach Feeding Your Demons every Wednesday at Against the Stream back in the day. And uh, it was a really wonderful way to share this useful practice that has been so beneficial for me in my life. And so now at, in the Well of Being with San Francisco Dharma Collective, we do it, you know, maybe once every six to eight weeks. It seems that's the rhythm right now. Um, I'm trying to do about once every six weeks. So you can continue to drop in if it's something you like. And before we dive into actually what that is and doing it, I want to let you know that I've just posted a really uh, cool event. I'm teaching a four-class workshop called Creative Liberation, The Art of Feeding Your Demons. Ha ha ha. So if you like making art or you have always wanted to but felt like you didn't know how to start or didn't have the confidence to do it, this is a really, really wonderful um, opportunity. And it's for people who have already experienced feeding your demons. So I won't have to go through the whole introduction. So this is for you. You're getting an introduction tonight. You're experiencing it. I also recommend reading the book called Feeding Your Demons. Also, um, but the idea is to create a space for people who are already familiar with the practice to go deeper with it through drawing, painting, their, the imagery that comes up in the Feeding Your Demon process because we come to points during the process where I invite you to allow certain feelings or emotions to take shape, take form in front of you. You meet your demon, you meet your ally, and it's really cool to draw or paint or sculpt or even write more in depth about the imagery and what it means to you. And so I'm going to paste that link right there. I've just literally just posted it on the website yesterday. I'm teaching it with a really great friend of mine, Jen Burke, who's a longtime art educator. She's won awards in the city of Berkeley. She's taught kids from the age of, I don't know, six to a hundred. <laughs> and she really knows her stuff. We used to teach this class a lot in her art studio back, you know, 2015 through 2018. And we haven't taught it for a while, so we're going to do it on this online format. And I think it's going to be great because uh, she's also really good with the online format with her art teaching. So you all are welcome to come to that. It starts March 18th, four, four Thursdays. So it is during the workday. It's, it's the only time we could do it, but from 10 to 12, 15 four Thursdays, starting March 18th. Okay, so here we are, Feeding Your Demons. I'll tell you just a little bit about it, and then I'm going to guide you. So Feeding Your Demons is a five-step practice that's based on an ancient Tibetan Buddhist practice called Chud, which literally means to sever, to cut, and what it's referring to is to, to sever our attachment onto thoughts, feelings, identities that block our experience of freedom in our life, right? So the ancient practice of Chud was developed by an 11th century female teacher named Machig Labdrun, and she developed her own practice and really created like one of the only lineages that was 
kind of invented in Tibet. Everything else came from India. And she adapted what she had learned from her teachers, her Indian teachers, learning the sutras, the tantras, and developed this beautiful, beautiful practice that is done as a healing ceremony. It's done as a contemplative practice called Chud. You may be aware aware of it already. It's done with a bell and a drum and sung with beautiful melodies. I, I do it. I know some people here in the group do it. I see you. And my teacher, Lama Tsoltrim Alioni, learned it, taught it for many years. And even though she personally knew and felt the healing potential of this kind of ancient ritual art, she could also see that modern day practitioners were kind of often missing the gems in it because it was done in a foreign language, not everybody speaks Tibetan. <laughs> and even if you're kind of singing it and you've studied it, you're still trying to do all this drumming and belling and singing and it's a whole thing it's beautiful but it's kind of complex so she simplified it and then blended it with modern gestalt therapeutic methods of the empty chair dialogue therapy where you 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 give form to aspects of yourself that are kind of flying around in your inner life that you haven't really looked at or couldn't quite differentiate from or understand like maybe there's some anger in there or some fear or some abandonment or some you know not feeling good enough whatever it is these little aspects of ourselves that stay amorphous but kind of govern our life you give them form in front and dialogue with them it's really brilliant and Perhaps some of you have that experience already, so this might feel familiar. So I'll walk you through it. You'll have your eyes closed throughout the whole thing. It's like a guided meditation. And then I'll give you time to journal at the end. And if you have a sketchbook, you could also sketch. Yeah. So if you have a journal or a sketchbook, a piece of paper, have that nearby. I'm going to ask Noam to also paste. Uh, there's a PDF that's fillable. It's a it's a fillable form to track the feeding your demons. It's what we use for our trainings and stuff. So I like to make that available to you. But by no means do you have to use that. It's just for fun. It's for you to have. You're going to see it in the chat. And people often ask, how do I get it out of the chat? What you do is you double click on it. And then it opens up in your browser. Then you can save it for later. You can just save it right away. Or you can just put it in the background and, and uh, know that it's there. And then I'll also ask him to post what's called the solo abbreviated uh, Feeding Your Demons script. What that is is um, something for you to read to yourself and take yourself through the practice. If you like this, then you can keep that and actually do it on your own. That's like a, a beautiful tool uh, to have at your disposal. So those are gifts for you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Every day is your birthday. And so... I will guide you through this. I want to say a couple more things about it. What's so beautiful about this practice, in my opinion, is that it's similar to gestalt therapy, dialogue therapy. <clears throat> Don't worry, I mean, it's not like I'm your therapist here tonight, but it's a structure that helps you go deep and learn actually from yourself, learn from your inner wisdom. And then the f last step of this five steps, so the fifth step, is contemplation, is resting in the nature of awareness, just resting. And that time, tonight, we may do five, ten minutes of quiet sitting there in that fifth step. But when you're home on your own and you do this, you could take a whole 30 minutes, an hour, and really let that be your meditation practice. The whole practice from beginning to end takes about 35 minutes. So the first four steps are about, you know, 20, 25 minutes. And then that fifth step could be elongated however long you want. Some people might say, I, I don't visualize very easily. I'm not a visualizer. That's okay. You don't have to be a visualizer. Just, just trust that the, the subconscious will offer you imagery when it's available, when it's right. Carl Jung, the great psychologist, said, the subconscious communicates through imagery. 
And that's so true. And we really see that in the feeding your demons. So all at times ask you now, let that anger, that fear, whatever it is that you're working with, come out of the body temporarily and take form as a being in front of you. And your eyes will be closed and it's like you're just letting the mind's eye open and allow whatever comes to your awareness to be there. Don't judge it. There's no right or wrong here. You may see things clearly. You may see things a little more like feeling them or sensing them. Just go with it. Because as the process unfolds, it's designed to help things come into more clarity. There's a moment where I'll ask you, um, when you see the so-called demon in front of you, to ask it three questions. What do you want? What do you really need? And how will you feel when you get what you really need? So what that's getting at is first meeting it at its superficial kind of surface level. Like, what do you want? Like, why are you here? But the second question is, how will you feel? Or or what do you really need? Second question, what do you really need? So what's the need underneath the want? So we're digging deeper. And then the third question is, how will you actually feel when you get that need met? What is the feeling you're looking for? Yeah. And then it's that feeling that we will then take on to the, to the, to into the next step. And um, make sure you have an empty seat in front of you. So everybody do that right now. You might just want empty space or an empty chair or a cushion. So because I'm going to ask you to switch positions <clears throat> and take that empty seat. Now if you don't have a uh, if you have to sit in a chair but you only have one chair in your room, that's okay. When I ask you to switch positions, you'll just stand up and turn to face your original chair. You can just stand up. Yeah, I think that's, this process is self-explanatory as it unfolds. There's not too much that needs to be said. The so-called demons, when Machi Glabdrin was teaching on this, she said, demons are not real goblins or ghosts or ghouls out there. They are that which which blocks our experience of freedom. So what is blocking you? Just right now start to ponder what's been kind of like, sitting on my shoulders all day what's been digging at my gut what thoughts have been looping around in my in my mind distracting me from what I want to do have I just gone through some a challenging conversation what's still residual with that Um, it doesn't have to be really like the biggest obstacle you can find. It can be something subtle that's kind of gnawing at you. Uh, Some therapists will say if if you're new to this and you don't have a lot of experience with this type of work, then take something that from a scale from one to 10, maybe like a four or three, something that's a little more mild. But if if you're if you feel you want to work with your big demon, that's also okay. You know, if you have to you have to choose. And this structure, just stay with the process with me. Don't drop out. Okay. I want you to stay with it because it resolves in a very beautiful, wholesome way. And when you think that, oh, I don't want to be with this anymore, then the next step comes, and then you have some more learning, some more resolution, some more clarity. This is like a meditative process. Don't let the mind co-opt you off into Netflix land (laughs) or something. So... Let's let's have this 
experience and then if you have questions you can ask afterwards i'll address um, address them afterwards and just see what comes first thought best thought just trust and uh, let's let's go ahead and drop in now and if you don't know what you're going to work with don't worry about it i'll give you some time after we do some relaxation breaths to contemplate what you want to work with tonight you don't have to know that right now so you've got an empty seat in front of you maybe you have your journal and a pen or pencil off to the side and then when you're ready closing your eyes I'm starting to take some deep breaths We always begin with nine relaxation breaths. So for the first three breaths, breathe into any physical tension in your body and releasing the tension with the out breath. Breathing into it, feel it, and release with the out breath. Feel it melting down into the earth beneath you. And then with your next few breaths, breathe into any emotional tension. Feel where you might be holding emotional tension in your body. Breathe in, into it and release with the out breath. Feel it melting down, down into the earth beneath you. And then with the next few breaths, breathe into any mental tension. Feel where you might be holding mental tension, worries, concerns, hope and fear. Feel it, breathe into that. And release with the out breath. Feel it melting down into the earth beneath you. And now let's take a moment to arouse our motivation for our time, recognizing that our inner healing has repercussions and benefits, not only for ourselves, but we practice for ourselves and others. Your motivation to heal to feel whole. Now let's take some time here to really drop in and feel what it is that you would like to work with tonight. What's most at the surface? What's blocking your experience of freedom? What's zapping your energy, draining you? Take some time. Sometimes it's often just waiting right there, just waiting to be seen. If 
it's hard to decide, you can feel into what's at the surface, what's kind of most available right now, what's, what's here. Often we try to push away or ignore things we don't want to feel or see. This is the chance to turn towards to feed rather than fight our so-called demons. You may have a few in line. You could just choose one. Just choose one tonight. Clarified, landed on what it is you may that you want to work with tonight. It might be fatigue or depression, or it might be anticipation or anxiety. It could be a craving. It could be like something you want to perhaps let go of, like a behavior, addiction. Any of that is available, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. It could be illness or chronic pain. You can work with that as well in this process. And feel where it lives in your body. A feeling where this so-called demon lives in your body most strongly. The chest, the belly, the back, the neck. And notice what is the shape of the feeling? And what is the color? What is the texture? Is it smooth and rough, jagged, round, soft, hard? And what is the temperature, hot, cold, warm, neutral? And now 
intensify this feeling for a moment, just a moment, even remembering when you felt it most strongly last. And now the second step is to imagine that this feeling, texture, and so on leaves your body and becomes personified as a being in front of you with face and limbs. And even make a gesture with your hands to help feel moving that energy out of the body and into the space in front of you. And let it take shape, take form. Notice what you see. If an inanimate object appears, imagine what it would look like if it were personified as some being with the face, eyes, limbs. Because we're going to dialogue with it, so... What would it look like if it were personified? And notice its size. Notice its color, colors. Notice the surface of its body. What is the texture of its skin? Notice its density. And does it have a gender? And what is its character like? What is its emotional state? And what is the look in its eyes? And 
And now finally notice something that you haven't seen before. Is it wearing something? Something else about this creature? You haven't seen yet. And now you're going to ask this demon the following questions, one after me, one after another, following after me, out loud. Not waiting for the answer, because you're going to switch positions and answer as the demon after you ask these questions. So saying after me, what do you want? What do you really need? And how will you feel when you get what you really need? Having asked those questions, now slowly switch places, taking that empty seat or empty space in front of you and facing your original seat now, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. Staying in your experience. And now the third step is to become the demon. So now take a, a moment to settle into the demon's body and feel what it's like to be the demon now. You can take a gesture, an expression that helps you embody the energy of the demon if you like. If the demon's standing, you could stand up. If the demon's crouched over, you can crouch over. Notice how it feels to be in the demon's body. Really let yourself take the seat of the demon or stand in the demon's shoes. Really feel that. Don't hold back here. And now as the demon, notice how your normal self looks from the demon's point of view. And now you're going to answer those three questions one by one, speaking as the demon. I'll say the beginning, and you can say repeat the beginning and then complete the sentence, speaking as the demon. What I want is... The more connected you are to this demon feeling, of being the demon, the easier these answers will come. Really let yourself speak from the demon's point of view. What I really need is, what is the need beneath the want? 
What I really need is complete the sentence. And when I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need, I will feel. Complete this sentence. Sometimes it helps to repeat it a few times if it's difficult to find the answer. Say it out loud. When I get what I really need, I will feel. And if the answer isn't an actual feeling, then take that and say, when I experience that, it will feel. We need to land on a feeling tone. Make sure the answer to the third question is a feeling. Feel whole or complete or loved. How will you feel when you get what you really need? And then when you're ready, go ahead and switch back to your original seat, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. And taking a moment to settle back into your normal self. And see, feel the demon in front of you once again. And now either feel that your body, your physical body dissolves into nectar or that you create an infinite supply of nectar. And this nectar has the quality of the feeling that the demon would have when it gets what it really needs. The answer to the third question. So that either your body becomes the nectar and you offer it to the demon or you simply remain as you are and imagine that you create an infinite supply of nectar in any way that comes to your imagination. It can be rain, it can be light rays from the heart, it can be anything. And notice the color of the nectar. And offer this infinite supply of nectar to the demon, feeding it to complete satisfaction.
feeling the flow of nectar from you to the demon, offering this unlimited supply of nectar that has the feeling that the demon deeply, deeply wants, nourishing it to complete satisfaction. This can take some time. Stay with the feeling of the nectar flowing from you to the demon. And notice what happens as the demon takes it in. Noticing if the demon shapeshifts, changes, shape, or dissolves altogether, just keep feeding until it's completely satisfied and satiated. And if the heart feels closed or Restrained, open it and know that you've been resisting this so-called demon for so long. Offer it your attention as the nectar. Offer it this nectar without holding back and see what happens. And if the demon seems insatiable, imagine how it would look if it were completely satisfied. And now notice if there is a being present after the demon is completely satisfied. What do you see now? If there is a being present in place of the demon, ask this being if it is the ally. If not, then invite an ally to appear. Likewise, if there was no being present after the demon was satisfied, also invite an ally to appear now in the space before you. An ally is a benevolent guardian. So if there's any ambivalence there, then it's not the ally. That's okay. Invite an ally to appear before you. That's the case now. Notice the size of the ally. Notice its color, colors.
And notice the surface of its body, the texture of its skin. Notice its density. Is it light or dense, like a human or a body of light? Does it have a gender? And what is its character? What is its emotional state? And what is the look in its eyes? And notice something about the ally that you didn't see before. Feeling connected with the energy of the ally, now you're going to ask it some questions. Repeating out loud after me one by one, not waiting for the answer because you'll switch positions after and become the ally. So first asking, how will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? Once you've asked the questions now, carefully switch positions and become the ally. Switching positions is really important. It helps to shift perspective. And then take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Again, taking a gesture, an expression, a stance that helps you embody the energy of the ally. And notice how it feels to be in the ally's body. And 
And how does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? And now speaking as the ally, answering these questions, I'll say the beginning and you can complete it in a full sentence. Really feeling yourself as the ally. I will help you by... I will protect you by I pledge I will You can access me by And when you're ready, return to your original seat, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. And take a moment to settle back into your own body. And see, feel, sense the ally opposite you. See the ally in front of you and look into its eyes and feel its energy pouring into your body. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet to your fingertips and throughout your whole body, like you're receiving the blessing of the ally here. That feeling can come in through a form of light or energy, filling your whole body.
And now imagine that the ally dissolves into light, like an explosion of blissful light. Notice the color of this light. And feel this light dissolving into you, integrating this luminosity into every cell of your body. And notice the feeling of this integrated energy of the ally in your body. Now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve, dissolving into open, spacious awareness. This final step after dissolving, resting in awareness. Rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest. We'll sit quietly, releasing thoughts, distractions as they arise, and just continue to rest in this open, spacious awareness.
it's coming back now. It's when you do this on your own, the instruction is just to notice when discursive thoughts start to bubble up again, and that's a natural sign to just kind of bringing the practice to a close. And now gradually come back to your body. You can feel the breath in the belly, feel your hands on your lap, and also recall the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And now as you open your eyes, maintain that feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And just right away, reach for your journal, your pen and paper. You can open up that fillable PDF if you don't mind being on your screen. It's a typable PDF that you could fill out. Just let's spend some time journaling or drawing. If you had imagery and you want to sketch the drawing, you can do that. Or just kind of tracing from beginning to end some of the insights, the visions, the messages that came to you with the demon and then the ally. The tracking form helps you to remember what it is that you did. And if you would like to just sit in meditation, you can do that too. But take some time now, about seven minutes of journaling.
about uh, one more minute. And so we'll start to come back together. You can always return to more journaling if you wish. And so now we have time for discussion for group uh, sharing. If you'd like to unmute yourself and share your experience uh, or ask a question, this is the time where you can chat in a question. I'm curious, did anybody, did people sketch a little bit or doodle your images of your demon or your ally, <laughs> as well as journal? Sometimes it's like great to have a feeding your demons journal and you can watch and track your work over time. And I love to have one of those large drawing journals where you can draw and then write notes about your process. This kind of thing is really fun to do. So any questions or sharing, please? Joseph raised his hand. Good. How do we uh, how do we pick on Joseph? Well, I'm good. I don't think I'm unmuted. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Hey, I'm Joseph. Uh, that was emotional. I'll try not to get emotional. Thank you for that, though. I, I won't go into specific detail, but, but what my demon was, or uh, there was a, a cue, like you said, a cue formed in the beginning. There was a cue of demons <laughs> to get in there, and they kept stepping up. But the one I settled on, it was like it was just sitting back there against the wall, waiting on the little lesser demons to get out of the way because it knew it was the one, right? <laughs> And uh, what it what it wanted, I forget the question, but it wanted acceptance, compassion, and, and freedom. Mm -hmm. It wanted acceptance, like, hey, I'm the demon, that's the problem. And it wanted compassion. And this is where I get emotional. It wanted compassion because my demon said, it's not my fault, you know. Mm -hmm. And the demon wanted freedom because I'm holding it hostage. It, it just wants freedom. It wants me to let it go, you know. So it was real interesting the way that wound out from the demon being the initially the bad person to what it freedom. It's like just let me go, Joseph. You're holding me hostage. Just, just let me go. It wants freedom, and uh, the ally part was just the overriding word was uh, faith. My ally was telling me, hey, just have faith if, uh, that if you give this demon freedom, I'll give you freedom from the demon. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if all that makes sense, but uh, it does. yeah, that was, that was great. Thank you for that. Was, uh, was that your first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sounds like you That's, got it. You're yeah. just right on track. Yeah, that was. Wonderful. I love when my emotions get moved and I, I learn things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've got a demon that just wants freedom, you know. But, Beautiful. And uh, he's, he's got to go. So, yeah, that was a great practice. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Th thanks, everybody. That's all. Thanks, Joseph. It's so inspiring to hear people's experience, isn't it? Um, okay, is that uh, Juliet? Are you are you asking to unmute? I'm going to ask you. To, oh, I thought you had a hand raised, but it was just my little cursor finger pointing at you. Who else would like to share or ask? Uh, 
um, you know, we could always pause recording too. I don't know. Do people feel shy with the recording? I could, we could totally pause that when the sharing time comes. It's easy. I think that, you know, our sharing though really helps others. We see each other's humanity. We learn from each other. I see Laura. Okay, you've got your hand raised. Oh, and Mia, uh, Joseph totally inspired me. And yeah. I'm a first timer too. Great. Um, that was a lot. So hold on. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So my demon was right up front. It was self-doubt. It was just... And when I brought it, first it was slimy in my body. It was like slime everywhere. Or it had limbs to go everywhere. And like those kid toys with the hand that stretch. It was like that. And then when I took it out of my body, if you've ever seen the movie Weird Science, with Chet at the end becomes that gross, big thing that can't move. So then I, when the nectar, the thing it wanted was... And this surprised me was belonging. Mm -hmm. I don't know how self-doubt wants belonging, but I don't, that was what it really wanted. And uh, when I gave it belonging, it turned into, this sounds so crazy, right? This confident little pickle. I know. It was like this pickle with its chest up like a superhero and it was running around and it had all this energy and at one point it ran through my head and out of my mouth and it was like so confident and um, just because I have a problem in my voice and so that's why I was inspired to share but the other interesting thing to me was how differently they both saw me they both saw me very differently and that was really interesting to me so thank you thank you that was a lot <laughs> you did it no, it's good thank you i know maybe we, we we're not expecting this coming to a meditation yeah. class but you it, it's so magic i mean the pickle the confident pickle could you ever consciously think of that <laughs> it's so great i love right. it Right. And I belonging. That I don't know where that, mm. I would have never that, so I know that was like a really inspired thing. So thank you so much. Yeah, good. So sometimes it can be helpful to uh, find objects or pictures that help remind us of our ally or our demon too. But the ally is a nice thing to, to try to carry with you, you know, like little mindfulness tool. I remember once I had a a um, a whale was my ally, and I was in a store the next day, and I saw these postcards, and there was this beautiful postcard of a whale, and it reminded me of my ally, so I got it, and I put it at the kitchen sink so that when I did the dishes, I could remember my that ally and what it taught me. So. If, Next time you eat a pickle, <laughs> remember your ally or, you know, you can draw it or just try to remember it throughout your day. I see Donna, you've got your hand raised. Hi. Oh, for some reason we can't hear you. Looks like she's unmuted, is it? Doesn't it know him? But for some reason, we can't hear them. Okay, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Maybe. Seems like something's not connecting with your mic somehow. Maybe. Why don't you maybe take a moment to work on that? We could go to someone else and then come back to you. Oh, oh, I see. She's got a chat saying I have to change the battery on your mic. Okay, got it. You come back. Anyone else? Did anyone... Uh, how did it feel meditating at the end? We did eight minutes of silent meditation. And did you feel... Did you feel different from when 
you normally sit. Did you, were you able to slide right in or, or not? Andre, I want to, I want to share. Um, yeah. Can't raise my hand. Because who's of that? I can't see who's talking. Oh, it's Jason. Hi. Nathan. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like, uh, I wanted to share. I've done, I'm, I'm a repeat demon feeder. Uh, but this time something happened in my ally where I actually, my ally became a friend of mine who was somebody who passed away in March last year. Mm. Who It was a really different kind of thing because usually it's like a pickle or a weird, you know, it's, but this was a person. And mm. I realized like I hadn't been, I hadn't been able to process the grief or the loss of this person. It was just, she died of an aneurysm in the brain. Mm. And she was a really dear friend. She was somebody I could talk to about anything. And all of a sudden there was this big hole in my life. And uh, I kind of, this, this process created this kind of way to have a conversation with that ally, that person, even though they're gone and they're not there anymore, I sort of brought her back. I just wanted to share that because it was, usually it's not as uh, tangible as a person. It's usually some strange kind of, I had one time where it was my heart doing mm-hmm. backstroke in in, a, in the nectar, you know, and it was that kind of mm-hmm. a thing. But this was very like a person that can sit with me and talk to me. And it's really interesting. I just want to share that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's, and what I'm getting from the share so far is that people really have, you, you really went with it. You really just took it and didn't try to edit or control and might not have made sense. But there's always lessons in there. It's like, it's such a beautiful way to learn to really trust your instinct. Because when you come out the other side, you realize, okay, that's why it was a pickle. <laughs> or that's why she came to me. This will keep living in, in you uh, as you sleep, as you wake up in the morning. Think about it. Okay, Donna, you want to give it another try? Is that better? Oh, so much better. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share that my... That the part where um, um, I was sharing nectar with the demon, um, I I had this really clear image of kind of a mango lassie in the bowl of my hands, and the demon <clears throat> who is kind of <clears throat> like um, maybe in a an abandoned child. Um, as an adult um, was drinking from my hands and slurping like sort of sort of just a, a very very loudly <laughs> and hungrily and the level of the nectar would go down but but would keep filling up as it went down and I could feel energy from my body filling up the nectar in the bowl Mm. while I could also sense, you know, sort of um, the demon becoming satiated. Um, But it it took a while. (laughs) Uh, The demon was very hungry. (laughs) So, um, yeah, that's that's the image I want to. That's to beautiful, beautiful. The the feeling that I felt that as you said that the arm, the energy coming through the arms, refilling the nectar as it was drinking it, and, and it wasn't a draining feeling, you know mm-hmm. that, that, you know I was like the life was being sucked out of me or anything. It, it wasn't like that at all. It was it was more. Um, um, that somehow my body was just producing the nourishment. Um, and I've not been a mother, so I don't know about breastfeeding, but it was kind of, it, it seemed like it was like that, that all of a sudden, you know, my, there was just energy being produced and coming into my hands um, uh, that the demon was drinking. <laughs> That's great. That's so great. Thank you. I get kind of giddy when I hear people sharing about this because it's always, it's always so much more far out and cool than, than 
I could expect. <laughs> I mean, it's not always too. You know, don't worry, don't sweat it if you kind of had a, <laughs> if yours wasn't, didn't feel that connected. That's okay. Some days we're more connected than others. Uh, but often this imagination is so rich. We can just get out of the way. It's like, I feel like this practice is like opening these, you know, like they have in like Kansas, you know, with the Wizard of Oz, those, those big, uh, her, um, tornado doors down into the subconscious, you know, <laughs> like we're opening the doors and we're letting the subconscious bubble up with its imagery, things that we couldn't really bring into being with our conscious mind. Oh, it's nine o'clock already. Thank you, everybody. I was getting ready for some more shares, but uh, I guess we should bring it to a close. Uh, we will do this again, probably in about six weeks or so. Just stay tuned with our email newsletters and our Instagram posts. We try to update ahead of time to let you know that this is what we're going to do. Normally, our Well of Being Wednesdays are um, doing some other really transformative teachings, like Feeding Your Demons, but different, called the Mind Training, Lojong. And each night we do one of these pithy slogans and we meditate on it, think about it. We learn the Tonglen meditation and shamatha. So that's kind of Wednesday after Wednesday, night after night, we do that. And then peppered in there from time to time is this wild ride of feeding your demons. So, so Noam has posted some stuff there in the chat, I see. And... Um, Thank you all for joining and for sharing and being here. May you be well and have a good night's sleep. Pay attention to your dreams. <laughs> and we'll see you again. If we want to unmute and say goodbye, it's always a, a, a fun thing to do for, for me. I enjoy. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night.